Welcome to my latest case, The Secret of Shadow Ranch. Just Dear Hannah, well, I made it to Shadow Ranch, but I'm afraid all is not well. The Raleigh's, the people who own the ranch, have been called away on some kind of emergency. They had Dave Gregory, he's their foreman, pick me up at the airport. He gave me a phone number, told me to call the Raleigh's at that number as soon as I got settled in, and refused to tell me anything else. In fact, he barely said two words to me the whole ride to the ranch. What's worse, Bess and George aren't here yet, which is very strange, because even though we had to take different flights, we figured we'd get into Phoenix at about the same time. Being here without them feels odd. After all, the Raleigh's are their aunt and uncle, not mine. I wouldn't even be here if Bess and George hadn't begged them to invite me out to the ranch for two weeks, too. Until about three months ago, the Raleigh's owned a clothing store. Bess said it was always their dream to sell the store and buy a cattle ranch. I hope they're okay. But frankly, as beautiful as Shadow Ranch is, I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this place. Love, Nancy. Phoenix and surrounding areas will be hot and dry today with temperatures expected to reach the mid-90s by 5 this afternoon. After that, temperatures will begin to drop with a nighttime low in the mid-60s. Most areas to the south and west of Phoenix can expect more heat for the next several days, while areas to the north and east should also expect rapidly developing thunderstorms. So if you're going to be hiking, biking, camping, or horseback riding, be aware that sudden downpours and flash floods are always a possibility at this time of year, and don't go into the wilderness areas unprepared. We've got several livestock auctions in the area tonight and tomorrow. Small animals, including goats, rabbits, and chickens, will be auctioned off at Barney Hall in Apache Junction, with doors opening at 6 and bidding beginning at 7. Barney Hall is located at 1339 South North Street. Also tonight, there is a horse auction at Lobenthal Farms, located on Route 5 in Gilbert. Doors will open at 5 for stall inspection of sale animals. Bidding starts promptly at 7. At 10 a.m. tomorrow, that's 10 in the morning, folks, there'll be video cattle auction over in the Gemstone Room at the Blue Dog Hotel in Rittenhouse, featuring Charlay and Angus Breeden stock. Hear that? That's the sound of happy cattle, healthy cattle, cattle whose diet includes Big Pink Mineral Supplement, chelated for easy absorption. Big Pink is the perfect blend of calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, chlorine, potassium, sulfur, cobalt, copper, fluoride, iodine, iron, manganese, selenium, and zinc. Minerals no bovine should be without. So for big results, stock up on Big Pink now. Frances Humber. Wonder who she was. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Raleigh. It's Nancy Drew. Nancy! Are you at the ranch? Yes, and I'm a little concerned that you're not. Is everything all right? Oh, everything's fine. I mean, it is now. It wasn't last night, of course. Everything would have been fine last night if you hadn't made such a fuss. How could I not make a fuss? There was a rattlesnake in our bedroom, for Pete's sake. Did you say rattlesnake? I told Ed to leave it alone and let one of the hands get it out of there, but no, Ed started poking at it with my yardstick, and all of a sudden it leapt up and bit him. How bad? Well, his arm swelled up something awful, and he was feeling pretty poorly by the time we finally got him here. I was fine. She's exaggerating. Oh, Ed, you wish. Anyway, dear, he's doing much better today, and the doctors think he'll be well enough to go home in a day or so. I'm well enough to go home right now. No, you're not. If I don't stay here with him, he'll get up and walk right out that door. No, I won't. Would you rather that Bess and George and I postpone our visit? Oh, good heavens, no. I won't hear of it. You're going to go on as if none of this ever happened. You just go get a horse from Tex. He's the head wrangler. And go riding to your heart's content. I told Shorty to go ahead with the cookout I planned for tonight and... The envelope. Have her take that envelope to Mary. Oh, good idea. There's an envelope in the roll-top desk in the den marked Mary. If you could ride over to Mary Yazzie's and give it to her, we'd really appreciate it.
I'd love to. Is there an address on the envelope? Babe will tell you how to get there. She's gonna have to get the key to the desk from him, too. Oh, that's right. I always lock the roll top. Dave has the key. Oh, dear. It seems like there was something else I wanted to tell you. The horse, Bed. Tell her about the phantom horse. Did he say phantom horse? Yes. You see, last night we... Hello, Mr. Raleigh. Time for those tests. Uh-oh. We have to go. Don't worry about us, dear. You just go have fun. Just be sure to wear a hat and drink plenty of water. It's gonna be another hot one. Bye! No, wait. Just tell me about the... Phantom horse? Hey, you must be Nancy. I'm the cook, Shorty Thurmond. Welcome to Shadow Ranch. Come on over here and tell me about yourself. You have talked to the Rawleys, right? I have, and I still can't believe what happened to Ed. That is creepy, isn't it? But the horse, that was even creepier. See, I was just about to crawl into bed last night when all of a sudden this glowing horse comes galloping up outside. It stops and rears and paws, whinnying and snorting. Then it just wheels around and gallops off into the night. It was Dirk Valentine's horse, you know. Now it's a phantom. Dirk Valentine? Dirk Valentine was an outlaw around here back in the 1880s. Legend has it he was in love with Frances Humber. She lived right here on Shadow Ranch. Unfortunately, her daddy was the sheriff. Ouch. Because of him, Valentine was captured and eventually hanged. Ever since, the ghost of his horse has been roaming the desert, cursing whoever sees him with bad luck. What a great story. Story? All I know is, Ed Rawley sees the horse, and what happens less than two minutes later? He gets bit by a rattlesnake. You do the math. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. You talked to the Raleigh's? I sure did. Do you think Ed's gonna be all right? He'll be okay. Getting bit by a rattler's no picnic, but it sounds like he's out of the woods. How do you think that snake got into their room? Probably crawled in through a mouse hole sometime during the day and took a nap. Nighttime's when they're most active. Something the Raleigh's found out the hard way. Has anything like that ever happened here before? Not since I've been here. Guess you're gonna be asking me a lot of questions, huh? I don't know. Why do you ask? The Raleigh said you were a detective. Amateur detective. It's just kind of a hobby. I'm gonna be honest with you, ma'am. We were short a couple hands to begin with, and now with the Raleigh's gone and everybody on edge over what happened last night, well, this is not a good time to be visiting Shadow Ranch, that's all. The Raleigh's asked me to take something out to Mary Yazzie's, but it's in the den in the roll-top desk, which is locked. They said you had the key? Sure do. They gave me their key ring at the hospital. Great, thanks. To get to Mary's shop, just follow the trail that goes northeast out of the corral. Can't miss it. And I should probably warn you, she doesn't like the Raleigh's. Why not? No idea. Not really any of my business. I'll let you get back to work. Take care. Hmm. 
Sounds like this Jane Nash person has it out for the Raleigh's. Hmm, the Raleigh's sold a trunk full of junk to Mary Yazzie. So which one are you? The nice one? The Raleigh said they were going to be inviting some young ladies out here. I take it you're one of them. I'm Nancy Drew. My two friends haven't arrived yet. Why not? Is that important? I brought three horses in this morning. Hardly fair to keep them tied up all day if nobody's going to ride them. So you're in charge of the horses? I'm the head wrangler. You want to ride, you come to me. You prove to me you know what you're doing, I may just let you. How do I prove to you I know what I'm doing? First thing you're gonna do is never ride unless you're wearing a hat and gloves. And unless you got a full canteen of water, you can wear that hat over there. It's Mrs. Raleigh's. Got a helmet built right in. Her gloves are on the saddle you'll be using, and you can get a canteen from Shorty. Then you're gonna saddle and bridle your horse. No need to brush them. I do that when I bring them in. Then you're gonna lead them to the mountain block in the corral and mount up. Then I'm gonna ask you some questions. You can't ride outside the corral till you get all the answers right. Once I pass your test, can I ride any time I want? Long as you talk to me first. When you're done riding, you're gonna dismount, hook your horse up, take the saddle and bridle off and put him back where you got him. Always keep your gloves with your saddle. Which horse would you like me to ride? The bay over there. Name's Bob. If you get off when you're on the trail, don't tie your reins to nothing. Just drop them and bar in an earthquake or something. Old Bob will stay put. Talk to you later. No hurry. Well, hello there. You got some friends back there? Hi there. You two aren't too shabby looking either. Bess, it's me. I'm at the ranch. Where are you guys? Omaha. Omaha? As in Nebraska? Our plane had to land here so they could fix some radio problem, and now they're saying... It's Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, George. Now they're saying we may be here for hours. Hours? You're kidding. Who knows what's really going on? Yeah, no one around here ever gives you a straight answer. So what's going on there? A lot. Last night, Uncle Ed and Aunt Bet found a rattlesnake in their room. Oh my gosh! Are they okay? Well, actually, it bit Uncle Ed. <gasps> Is he all right? He will be. Right now, he's in the hospital. He'll probably be there for a day or two. Aunt Bet's staying with him. Oh my gosh! And apparently, a phantom horse showed up at just about the same time as that snake. A phantom horse? Of all the times to get stranded in some stupid airport. Look, you just better keep us posted, Nancy Drew. That's all I gotta say. We're so bored, George just bought a book on 19th century clothing and accessories. George did? It's the only thing in the bookstore here that looked halfway interesting. So if you need to know anything that's even remotely related to 19th century fashion, let us know, okay? Sounds good to me. So what else has been going on? Apparently last night, this glowing horse came galloping up out of nowhere, caused a huge commotion, then went galloping off and disappeared. It was glowing? It looked like it was glowing. You're there investigating phantom horses, and what are we doing? A big fat nothing. That does it, George. We're suing the airline. The cook, Shorty Thurmond, he says the phantom horse belonged to this outlaw named Dirk Valentine, who was hanged back in the 1880s. Is this Valentine guy a phantom, too? Uh, I don't think so. Well, how come his horse got to become a phantom and he didn't? Bess, phantoms don't really exist, okay? According to legend, seeing the horse is bad luck. I believe it. I mean, look at what happened to the guy who owned him. 
Don't you think it's kind of odd how that rattlesnake showed up in the Raleigh's bedroom right after that phantom horse showed up outside? You don't buy that it was an unfortunate coincidence? I think it was more like a well-planned distraction. So, you're saying someone used the horse to lure everyone outside, then put the snake in their room, knowing no one would be watching? It's possible, don't you think? But if you're right, it means someone wants to hurt Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed. Oh my gosh! If you're right, it means that someone is on the ranch! And whoever it is must be working with an accomplice. You know, someone to wrangle the horse. So everyone there is a suspect. That's right. Well, you don't have to sound so happy about it. That's it for now. Two words, Nancy. Call us! Need something? May I go riding now? Nope. With the Raleigh's gone, the ranch is real short-handed. Before you ride, you're gonna have to go see if Shorty's got any chores that need doing. Gotta get a canteen from him anyway. Talk to you later. Just stay out of trouble. Hey there, Nancy. Man, I wish the Raleigh's were here. Me too. It'll be nice to talk to them in person. I'm really looking forward to you and me sitting down and having a nice conversation, especially with all the weird stuff that's going on. I'm so busy getting all their chores done in addition to my own that I barely have time to talk to myself, let alone to you. Enough of me complaining. What's up? Tex said I should get a canteen from you and see if there are any chores you'd like me to do. Music to my ears. First thing you can do for me is go out to the garden and pick all the ripe vegetables. You know what ripe vegetables look like, don't you? No, but don't worry. I'll find out. Good, because if you pick vegetables that aren't ripe yet, I'll be real ticked. You can put them in the vegetable basket that's hanging outside. And one more thing. Sometime today, I need you to build a cooking fire in the pit outside. I'll light it when I'm ready to start cooking. And be sure to fill the bucket out there with water and leave it by the pit. You know, just in case something catches on fire that isn't supposed to. The Raleigh's wanted to have a cookout tonight, and by golly, we're gonna have a cookout no matter who is or isn't here. Well, I'd better get going. Don't be a stranger. I didn't know thermometers went up that high.
It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables for me yet? Take a look. Oh no, you got stuff in here that isn't wrapped yet. Picking stuff before it's wrapped is a waste of perfectly good food. So don't do it again, you hear? Now, second thing I need you to do for me is take this, go out to the chicken coop and fill it up with eggs. Just be careful of that basket. It's kind of old. And don't forget to build me that campfire like I asked. Right. I need something to put the fire out. Call me Nancy Paul Bunyan Drew. Bank robbers? Wonder who wrote this? It's a fire pit. So far, so good. I need more kindling.
not yet. So far, so good. I need more kindling. So far, so good. That should do it. There, one extremely well-built campfire, if I do say so myself. Great looking fire, Nancy. Nice job. Got those eggs for me? Not yet. I need those eggs, Nancy. Oh, no! There's a hole in it.
There. Am I good or what? Voila! Hello, Nancy. Something I can do for you? How long have you worked here? About as long as the Raleigh's have lived here. About three months, I guess. I was their first hire. First me, then Tex, then Shorty. Tex seems a little ornery. He does his job, and he does it good. Far as I'm concerned, that's all that's important. I talked to my friends, Bess and George. Their plane's been delayed. They aren't sure when they're going to get here. Sorry to hear that. Well, to be honest, I'm not, really. Driving back and forth to the airport takes a lot of time, and time's one thing we're all running kind of short of around here. I'll let you get back to work. See you later. Ow! 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 Yikes! Maybe I'll come back when she's not in such a foul mood. something did you see the phantom horse last night i saw something just what i still ain't sure talk to you later yahoo those eggs for me right here good for you anything I can do for you now do you think I could get a canteen of water from you got one right here you're good to go well I'd better get going pleasure talking to you something may I go writing now yep if you got everything I told you you need and you think you know your stuff when it comes to horses old Bob's all yours talk to you later just stay out of trouble Come on, Bob. <laughs> I'm ready. Ready for some questions? I think so. Where's the horse's hocks? On its front legs. Nope. Ask me something else. Where's the horse's frog? On the bottom of its hoof. That's one out of ten. Ask me something else. How tall is a horse that's 15 hands? Five feet. Two out of ten. Got a long way to go. Ask me something else. What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? A paint horse. Nope. Ask me something else. 
How can you tell if a horse is colicking? It keeps lying down, then standing up. Three down, seven to go. Ask me something else. What's the difference between a bay and a chestnut? A bay is light brown. Nope. Ask me something else. What tribe bred the first Appaloosas? The Nez Pierce. That's four right. Ask me something else. What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? It's back. Nope. Ask me something else. What part of the saddle should you always check before you head out on the trail? The cinch. That's five. You're halfway there. Ask me something else. What is a mule? The offspring of a female horse and a male donkey. Bingo. That was number six. Ask me something else. Where's a horse's hocks? On its back legs. Seven down. You're in the home stretch. Ask me something else. What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? A quarter horse. Nope. Ask me something else. What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? A draft horse. Nope. Ask me something else. What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? A gated horse. Eight right. Just two to go. Ask me something else. What's the difference between a bay and a chestnut? A chestnut is light brown. Nope. Ask me something else. What's the difference between a bay and a chestnut? A chestnut has black points. Nope. Ask me something else. What's the difference between a bay and a chestnut? A bay has black points. This here's your final question. I'm ready. What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? Its stomach. Nope. Ask me something else. What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? Its feet. Well, you answered all the questions right. And I can tell by the way you sit, you ain't gonna go falling off for no good reason. So you're free to ride outside the corral. Just don't go galloping all over the place. Because if you bring old Bob back all hot and sweaty, you can kiss your cowgirl days at Shadow Ranch goodbye. Okay, Bob, what do you say we do some sightseeing? Hi, can I help you? Hi, are you Mary Yazzie? That's me. I didn't hear a car. Did you hike in or come by horse? I rode here. I'm Nancy Drew. So where are you staying? Shadow Ranch. I heard what happened last night. Tough break for the Raleigh's. Getting that place going has been a real struggle for them. How did you hear about it? Word gets around. You probably know everyone in the valley, don't you? Oops, I almost forgot. Bet wanted me to give you this. Great. I want to buy a small piece of property from them. It must be their response. Bad news? They rejected my offer. Well, I guess that's that. But as long as you're here, look around. All the jewelry you see, all the rugs, the beadwork, the pottery, they were all made by local artists, including yours truly. So if you want to know something, especially if you want to know how much something is, just ask. I understand that you bought a trunk full of junk from the Raleigh's recently. Yeah, they didn't want much for it, so I took it off their hands. Problem is, I still don't know what's in it because I can't figure out how to open it. Have you asked the Raleigh's about it? They were no help, although they did offer to buy it back from me. I just told them to keep looking for a way to get it open. It was great talking to you. Catch you later. That trunk looks... Would you mind if I try to get this open? Please do. In fact, if you get it open, I'll let you keep something from it. You can have your pick.
No sense going in there without a horse to- I don't want to lug this saddle around all day. I should put it back. Uh-oh. I'd better put that back. Oh my gosh, Jane Nash is Tex's sister. You still here? You sound surprised. You and your friends, if they ever show up, you ain't gonna last more than three days out here. Why do you say that? City folk can't take living out here. Too rugged, too much work, too dangerous. I understand you have a sister named Jane Nash. So what if I do? Did you know that she used to work for the Raleigh's? No, she didn't. What gave you that idea? Hey, you've been snooping, haven't you? In the Raleigh stuff, in my stuff. I'm just very observant, that's all. My business ain't none of your business. And that includes any sisters I may or may not have. You need to go. I'm busy. Miss Nancy, how may I be of service? Have you ever met Mary Yazzie? Course, nice lady. I mean, for the most part. Gets real unfriendly when the subject of the Raleigh's comes up. Do you know anything about the piece of property she's been trying to buy from the Raleigh's? Well, I know she says she wants to buy it because she feels spiritually drawn to it. But I think she's got something up her sleeve. Oh, Nancy, it's great having you here. I mean, I like to talk, you know? I like to converse, to debate, to discuss. Most people think I'm too nosy. You're not nosy. Me neither. People like you and I are fascinated by the human condition, that's all. So, who else do you want to talk about? Uh, nobody really. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. Hello, Nancy. Something I can do for you? I'll let you get back to work. Take care. Bob.
Hi, can I help you with something? It was great talking to you. Catch you later. No sense going in there without a horse to ride. That's not the right time. Must be broken. July 4th, 1882. Got sworn in as sheriff. It was the 4th, so it's like all them celebrations was for me. Which, of course, they weren't. Francis thought up a song and played it on the piano for me. I forget how it went, but it was pretty. I'm lucky to have her for a daughter. Herford Shoup come by with a plant he brung from New York, which he calls Harrison's Yellow. Looked right dead to me, but Francis planted it out back give it some water, and already it looks to be on the mend. She's 17 and can read and write good and knows her numbers. Herford's thinking to marry her, but I said she ain't of that mind yet. Herford Shoup come by March 30th, 1883. Francis has got eyes for a young man named Dirk. He 
says he's from Prescott. Cappy says when she plays the piano, this dirt makes everyone be quiet so he can hear her good. I ain't never seen her smile like she smiles now. I told her to bring him to the ranch for dinner, but she says he won't come because he's too shy. I wonder if that is the truth. April 16th, 1883. Got a letter from the sheriff over in Phoenix about this Dirk Valentine who was wanted for robbing two banks in a stagecoach. The picture with the letter looked just like Dirk, who Francis is sweet on. When I showed her the picture, she got tearful and run off. Now, Dirk is gone, and she won't say nothing about where he went. August 2nd, 1883. Dirk Valentine is robbing banks and coaches and trains all over the territory. Francis says he never ever shoots his gun and only steals from people that already got plenty of money. But that ain't true, because some of them trains he robbed was carrying money, meant to pay miners or hard-earned wages. He is nothing but a no-good, greedy outlaw. But Francis gets real mad when I say that. I fear she is still sweet on him, and that she sees him when she knows I am busy, and gets letters from him which she hides from me. September 9th, 1883. Got hold of a note Francis sent to Dirk, and saw where they was going to meet. So I got a posse and we caught Dirk, and now he's in jail. The judge is coming next week, and I hear he is a hanging judge, so Dirk most likely ain't long for this world. Frances won't say nothing to me no more, and says she never will again. September 13th, 1883. Dirk sends a secret letter to Frances, which Mason got hold of and give to me. I locked it up so she won't ever read it. Frances ain't allowed to see Dirk in jail, of course, and if she never sees his letter, maybe she will think he don't like her no more, and, and maybe she will stop liking him. Francis's ma would have known what to do better than me. I wish she was still alive. September 17th, 1883. They hung Dirk at noon. I thought I would be glad, but I ain't. September 18th, 1883. Francis took Brownie in my big saddlebag and is gone. She ain't told no one where she's going, not even Cappy. But I know she will forget Dirk, and when she does, she will come home because she's a smart gal and will figure out that I, I did what I'd done for her. January 4th, 1884. My sister says her little girl Ellie got a letter that said Francis went east and was not of a mind to ever return. I hope this ain't the truth, because I miss her something awful. June 11th, 1884. The Harrison's yellow, which Francis said was her favorite flower in the world, is just a pile of brown sticks now. I don't know how to look after delicate things like that, so it is my fault that it died. I ain't seen or heard from Francis in a year. I tell people she's on her way home, but when I look in my heart, I know this is a lie. She will never come back to Shadow Ranch, and it is my fault. I will just have to find a way to live with it. This doesn't look like it was ever opened. As usual, things did not work out like I planned. Just when I get everything fixed just right for you to go looking for the thing I hid for you, I go and get myself arrested. But no matter what you hear, nothing is gonna happen to me. I will be fine and we will be together soon, I promise. Meanwhile, you can keep busy by looking for what I hid. Start by using this piece of paper to mark where all the rock pictures are. They will tell you what to do next. Your favorite flowers and the flowers on your favorites, start keeping them in mind too. I will leave a message for you in this here cell, just in case they decide to move me to the jail down in Tumbleweed or something. I like vexing your brain, because when you are thinking real hard, like when you're playing the piano, you are more beautiful than anything in the world. I am sure to be out of here before you find my treasure, but in case I am not, know that it is all yours, and that you are more precious to me than 10,000 treasures put together. 9, 12, 15, 22, 5, 25, 15, 21. Dirk. P.S. I do not and never will hold what your father did to me against you. I like vexing your brain.
No sense going in there without a horse to ride. on this trunk. Whose are they? Do you know? I have no idea. I got the trunk open. Great. Thank you. Go ahead and take something from it. You deserve a reward. If I want something else from the trunk, I should put back what I took before. That... that's... check! I wonder how you open this. F.H. Francis Humber? Green bottle under... Hmm, wonder what that means. Not that my family's any of your concern, but my sister did work for the Raleigh's, back in Phoenix. She got fired, she got mad, but she's over it. Okay? Why didn't you tell me that before? Because it makes me look bad. I figured no one would ever find out, and when you did, I just got all... flustered-like. So all the bad stuff that's been going on around here, it's not because you're helping her get back at the Raleigh's for letting her go? Fact is, my sister can be kind of a flake. I'd have probably fired her too. Do you know anything about the treasure that Dirk Valentine supposedly hid for his sweetheart? Nope. Ah, eh, somehow I knew you were going to say that. Talk to you later. Just stay out of trouble. And she'll be coming around the mountain when she goes. I can't take any more. Where are you going? You can't leave. The Raleigh said we were to have a cookout and entertain our guest. Yeah, well, I don't call this entertainment. It's worse than whatever that stuff was you cooked. That was lamb ragu for your information, and it was great. If you couldn't appreciate it, it's because your taste buds are about as sophisticated as a sand fleas. I think I'll turn in, too. Night, ma'am. Next time, just stick to burgers. Et tu, Brute? You see that? You see what I put up with? 
Day in and day out, I cast my culinary pearls before ungrateful, uncultured swine. Well, I'll show them. I'll write a best-selling cookbook, that's what I do. Then I'll get my own TV show, then I'll do a movie, and while they're out here punching cattle, I'll become a gazillionaire. Oh my gosh! this happened right after that phantom horse showed up again? The pump house blew just as the horse was galloping away. Oh, my, this is awful. Maybe Shorty was right. Maybe that horse is a bad omen. That's what someone wants you to think, Aunt Bet. What do you mean? It's possible that while everyone's attention was on that horse, someone sabotaged the pump house. Why on earth would someone sabotage the pump house? Could someone be trying to get back at you for something? I can't imagine who. Maybe I can find out. You don't think Tex or Shorty or Dave is somehow involved, do you? It's possible, but I just don't know yet. Oh, my. You might not be safe there. Maybe we should send her home. I'll be fine. Really, I want to help. And I can help. Well, it sounds like we could certainly use your help. Can you think of anyone who might have a grudge against you? No, but I'll tell you what. Ed and I will put our thinking caps on, and if anything comes to us, we'll call you. Have you called the sheriff and told him all this? Not yet. Tell her about the storms. Tell me about the what? The storms. You need to be careful when you go riding, because it can be sunny one minute and pouring down rain the next. I'll be careful. Good. And if you have any more questions, just call. One more thing. Until I figure out what's going on, it would probably be a good idea not to mention my suspicions to anyone at the ranch. Of course. Keep in touch. I will. Bye. Mineral deposits? Can I help you find something? No, actually, I pretty much found everything on my own. For your information, I got those maps because I was hoping there might be a long-lost gold mine or two around here. But like most of my get-rich-quick ideas, it didn't pan out. Apparently, there's no gold left in them thar hills. Or silver, or copper, or anything else. Now, I don't ever want to catch you in my stuff again. WGS, this is Geyser. Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. Not too long ago, you provided this person I know with a map that showed the locations of mineral deposits in central Arizona? That's what I'm here for. Is it unusual for an ordinary citizen to request a map like that? Depends on which map it was. The number on it was PUB893A. Publication 893 Alpha. Let me get it on my screen here. Yeah, that's a map somebody'd use if they wanted to go prospecting in their spare time. What's this person's name? Uh, Shorty Thurmond? Shorty Thurmond. Yep, there he is. According to my notes, he'd just started a job in the Shadow Mountain area and figured he'd go looking for gold on his off hours. You keep notes on all the calls you get? In a bureaucracy like this one, you never know. When something goes south and fingers start pointing, it's always good to have your side of the story all nice and documented. Do your notes say anything else? Apparently, this shorty person asked me if I knew anything about Dirk Valentine's treasure. Really? Do you remember what he said? As I recall, he'd heard a rumor that some outlaw had buried some kind of treasure near Shadow Mountain. He thought it might be in an old mine shaft or something. And what did you tell him? Nothing. I didn't know anything about it. Well, thank you, Geza. No problem. What did you say your name was again? Nancy... Drew. Nancy Drew. Asked a lot of questions. Didn't buy any maps. But she really appreciated your taking the time to talk to her. Be sure to put that in your notes, too, okay? Got it. Goodbye, Miss Drew. Bye.
Hernandez. Hi, are you the sheriff? Yes, ma'am. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm staying at Shadow Ranch. Oh, yeah? I spent a good part of last night out there. I know. I never got a chance to talk to you. Is there something I can do for you? Would it be all right if I looked around in the pump house? Sure. I'm all done in there. Should I have my deputy take that sign down? Mind my asking why you want to look around? Wait a minute. Dave told me about you. You're the girl detective. Amateur detective. I don't know. Dave seemed to be real impressed with you. In more ways than one, I might add. Do you know most of the men who work at Shadow Ranch? I know them all. That doesn't mean I'm best buddies with them, but it's a pretty small world out here. And I've either known or known of those boys for years. And they're all stand-up guys, as far as you know? I'd vouch for every single one of them. Thanks for your help. My pleasure. Looks like the pipe is pretty badly corroded. Dave? Well, where did you come from? Where did you come from? Well, see, I just... I mean... I'm looking for Dirk Valentine's treasure. What do you know about it? See, my great Aunt Ellie was Francis Humber's cousin. When she died, she left me a bunch of stuff, including an old letter she'd gotten from Francis. In the letter, Francis said that Valentine had hidden a bunch of loot somewhere and wanted Francis to find it by following the clues he left for her. Francis was real smart, see? Loved puzzles, played the piano pretty good, too. Anyway, after Valentine met his end, Francis was too broken-hearted to care about some treasure. She told Aunt Ellie that if she could find it, she could keep it. I also found this picture. That's Francis's father, Sheriff Merrill Humber. There's something written on the back. Stairs to cellar. That's Francis's handwriting. Looks like the other half of the message got torn off. I was hoping that the treasure might be under the stairs in here, but no such luck. How long have you been digging around down here? About a week. Mostly late at night, or whenever I could sneak away. I come and go through a secret entrance. These stairs lead to a secret door behind the bookcase in the den. What do the Raleigh's think about all this? The Raleigh's don't know. I was afraid that if I told them, they'd... See, my brother's dead broke. No job, health's bad. I was thinking if I could just find the treasure... It is their property. I know, and I'll tell them, I swear, soon as they come back. They got enough on their minds right now. What about all the accidents that have been happening around here lately? I don't know anything about that horse or any of the other stuff that's been going on around here, I swear. Now, if you'll pardon me, I need to tend to my chores. No, wait. You don't have to leave. Something's missing. Acid. Wonder what somebody's been using that for. Maybe the message on the pictures refers not to the stairs to the den, but to these stairs.
There's something inside. I am glad that you are getting your picture painted wearing your favorite shawl. It will be a beautiful painting because you look beautiful in that shawl. I forget the name of the stitch you used to make it, but I think it is amazing that you learned how to knit a whole shawl just by reading one book. I wish I could put my mind to things like you can. I am also glad that you like the handbag that I got you. I knew it would become your favorite on account of the pretty picture the beads make. I want to know all the things that you like so that I can make sure you always have them. I figure that way you will always want me around. Meet me on Friday at noon by the big picture rock. I love you, Dirk. Remember when we were in Cappy's eating the crackers he orders special from California, and you said that from then on the crackers would be your favorite because they would always remind you of me? Well, I met a trader yesterday who had a whole wagon full of them, and I bought you four tins. I also bought a rock from him because this rock has been polished to show a picture that looks just like the landscape by one of our meeting places. He called it an agate and said that the picture was made by nature, but it looks so real I can hardly believe it. I am thinking of a way to surprise you with it because it is as special as you are. I will meet you Tuesday at 3 by the three-armed cactus. Your father has people watching for me all over the county. I guess you got some of your smartness from him. I love you, Dirk. I still don't know how you got a whole cake out to our last meeting place like you did, but it was the best thing I ever ate, and the prettiest too, what with that fancy flower you put on it. Now I think it is the best cake recipe in the world too, but nothing is as good as getting a letter from you. Whenever I see a flower like the one on your favorite letter paper, I think of you. I only steal from people who have plenty of money to begin with and deserve to be robbed, but if I could start over, I would forget about them and be a rancher or a farmer or miner or shopkeeper or whatever you wanted me to be, just so we could always be together. Be at Charlie's grave at sunset this Thursday. I love you, Dirk. Like I'm back in the den. Yes? I'm embarrassed that you caught me snooping through your stuff. Just proves we're birds of a feather. I've been known to go poking through other people's stuff myself. Have you been out to the pump house? All the water to the ranch house has been cut off. The livestock will still get water from the windmills, but we humans are gonna have to get every single drop of water we use from the faucet in the pump house. And that's gonna be a royal pain. Why can't that darn horse do its cursed thing somewhere else? You really think what happened to the pump house was the result of bad luck? I saw the pipe. It was rusted through. That's why it burst. That and bad vibes from that equine banshee. Got any chores you want me to do? Do exactly what you did for me yesterday, and I'll be forever grateful. Start by picking all the ripe stuff in the garden again. Baskets outside. What do you know about the treasure that Dirk Valentine supposedly hid around here for Francis Humber to find? If I thought there was a snowball's chance in Tampa that Valentine had stashed any of his loot here, I'd be tearing this place apart. Why? What do you know about it? I just heard about it, that's all. When I heard that rumor, I started reading everything about Dirk Valentine I could get my hands on. But the more I read, the more it sounded like he suckered Francis into believing he'd hidden something for her just to give people something to talk about when he was gone. Well, I'd better get going. Come back soon. Hello, Nancy. Guess I'm gonna be blushing every time I see you now. Because of that cellar thing? You don't have to be embarrassed, as long as you level with the Raleigh's like you said you would. Actually, I'm kinda glad you came by. Something I need you to do for me, if you wouldn't mind. You bet. This chicken coop's been a thorn in my side ever since I got here. The wire I need to fix the hole in the fence was supposed to be delivered today. But it's not here yet, and the Raleigh's just called and asked me to run an errand for them tonight. So if you could keep an eye out for that chicken wire and patch that hole as soon as it gets here, the chickens and I'd really appreciate it. Will the wire get here before it gets dark? Doesn't look that way. But you still have to put it up, even if it means working at night. Just be sure to wear gloves. I'll leave my pliers out. If you have to do it at night, that's okay. There should be plenty of moonlight. You'll be able to see fine. Just make sure it gets done, because if it doesn't, 
The coyotes are going to have themselves one heck of a banquet, and you're going to be in a lot of hot water. Great. Now, is there something I can do for you? Where was the jail that Dirk Valentine stayed in after he was arrested? Do you have any idea? Probably the one over in Dry Creek. It's a ghost town now. But the jailhouse and a couple other old buildings are still standing. At least they were last I saw. Is it far from here? On your way to Miriazzi's, look for the trail on your left that heads towards Shadow Mountain and stay on it till you get there. It's about an hour and a half's ride. This got something to do with the treasure? It might. Well, let me know if you need anything else. May I see that letter you said Francis Humber wrote to your great aunt? Sure, got it right here. When I heard you were a detective, I started keeping it on me. Thought you might snoop through my stuff or something. Thanks for letting me see it. Dearest cousin Ellie, my beloved Dirk is no more. I shall never see him again. And now you will never see me again, for I am on my way east, there to spend the rest of my life. And was quite clever himself. Then, thanks to my father, he was arrested. Perhaps he wrote me from jail and his note was lost. Or perhaps he grew to hate me. But he never told me how to find what he had hidden, and I am too heartsick to care. If you can somehow find it, it's yours, my dear young cousin. Know, too, that I miss you terribly and always, always... I'll let you get back to work. Appreciate it. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables for me yet? You betcha. Hey, you got stuff I can't use in here. Some of it's overwrap, some of it's underwrap. Now get out there and try again. And remember, just the wrap stuff. Right.
It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables for me yet? You betcha. Oh, no! You picked stuff that wasn't ripe yet again! Oh, well, there's only one thing to do. I don't understand, dear. Didn't Shorty tell you to only pick things that were ripe? Yes. But he says that you went out and picked vegetables that weren't ripe. Yes, I'm afraid I did. Oh, dear. That garden is an important source of food for us. We simply can't have someone picking things willy-nilly and wasting perfectly good vegetables. Can we, Ed? We could wind up with scurvy. You're just not responsible enough for ranch life yet, dear. So why don't you go back to River Heights? And just as soon as you've developed the proper respect for produce, we'll invite you back. All right? It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables for me yet? You betcha. Oh, no! You picked stuff that wasn't ripe yet again! Oh, well, there's only one thing to do. I don't understand, dear. Didn't Shorty tell you to only pick things that were ripe? Yes. But he says that you went out and picked vegetables that weren't ripe. Yes, I'm afraid I did. Oh, dear. That garden is an important source of food for us. We simply can't have someone picking things willy-nilly and wasting perfectly good vegetables. Can we, Ed? We could wind up with scurvy. You're just not responsible enough for ranch life yet, dear. So why don't you go back to River Heights? And just as soon as you've developed the proper respect for produce, we'll invite you back. All right? It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. There's more ripe stuff out there than that. There is? There's more ripe stuff out there than that. You bet there is. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables for me yet? You betcha. Oh, no! You picked stuff that wasn't ripe yet again! Oh, well, there's only one thing to do. I don't understand, dear. Didn't Shorty tell you to only pick things that were ripe? Yes. But he says that you went out and picked vegetables that weren't ripe. Yes, I'm afraid I did. Oh, dear. That garden is an important source of food for us. We simply can't have someone picking things willy-nilly and wasting perfectly good vegetables. Can we, Ed? We could wind up with scurvy. You're just not responsible enough for ranch life yet, dear. So why don't you go back to River Heights? And just as soon as you've developed the proper respect for produce, we'll invite you back. All right? It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables for me yet? You betcha. Good for you. Now, if you just fill that egg basket for me again, we'll be all set. Well, I'd better get going. Come back soon. Hello? 
Where are you guys? You've got to get out here. I saw the Phantom Horse last night. No, what we saw last night, the inside of a motel room in St. Louis. Tell me you're joking. Our plane finally took off at 7 last night. We didn't call you because we wanted to surprise you. Only the next thing we knew, we were being diverted to St. Louis on account of bad weather. So the airline put us up at a motel. But when we came back to the airport this morning, guess what? You're fogged in. We're fogged in. I have never seen fog this thick. Visibility's three feet top. You can barely drive in this stuff, let alone land and take off. Let's change the subject. So you saw the phantom horse? Last night, right after the campfire, this glowing horse appeared out of nowhere, then went galloping away. And right after that, the main pipe in the pump house sprang a leak. Another case of bad luck? I think not. So while everyone's attention was on the horse, someone sabotaged the pump house. First the rattlesnake, now this. Yikes. That's it for now. Thanks for calling. Bye, Nan. I'd better take these eggs to Shorty before I drop them or something. Got those eggs for me? Right here. Good for you. I need you to do one more thing. It's Tex's birthday. The Raleigh's told me to make him a cake. Now if I make it, he'll throw a fit. But if you make it, he might actually appreciate it. So why don't you dig a cake recipe out of the recipe box and have at it? I don't care when you make it, just so it's done by the end of the day. The icing's already made. Well, I'd better get going. Come back soon. First thing I'll need to make that cake is a mixing bowl.
Looks like I'm gonna have to guess how long to cook it and what temperature to use. Maybe I should try a little, just to be sure. Mm. <coughs> this tastes terrible. I better throw this out and make another one. Perfect. Maybe I should try a little. Just... Mm. <coughs> this tastes terrible. I better throw this out and make another one.
perfect. Maybe I should try a little, just to be sure. I should put that icing Shorty made on it. What are these? I made you that flour Frances mentioned in her recipe. I cut all the pieces out of marzipan using her old forms, but I'll be darned if I can figure out how the pieces go.
It's a tulip. What's this? That's food coloring so you can paint that marzipan flower. Miss Nancy, how may I be of service? Could I get a canteen of water from you? You betcha. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Pleasure talking to you. Miss Nancy, how may I be of service? Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. Need something? Is it okay if I go riding? Nope. Feed the chickens and the horses in the corral first. Could be fatal if you mess up, so don't. Talk to you later. No hurry. Okay, chickens, come and get it.
Need something? May I go riding now? Oh, Bob's all yours. I set up some barrels and a sawhorse so you can do some barrel racing and practice roping. Whenever you're out there, I'll watch you and time you. If you get good enough, like, say, you get your time below 10 seconds, and if you can lasso the sawhorse, like, say, four times out of five, I'll give you your very own lariat. You can practice as much as you want whenever you want. Just don't go walking off with my rope, because I'll be watching. Talk to you later. No hurry. Bob. Four out of five. Congratulations. Yeehaw! That's a five second penalty. You'll never get under ten seconds now. Yeah, yeah! Start over. Here we go! Eleven point five. Start over. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Nine point five. How about that? You did it. All right. Now I can get my own lariat. I did the barrel race in under 10 seconds and roped the sawhorse four out of five times. Do I get a lariat? Yep, here you go. I'm kind of surprised at you. Why? Figured you'd be good for some laughs out there. You weren't. But there's still hope. This little vacation of yours ain't over with yet. Talk to you later. If you last that long. No sense going in there without a horse to ride. Looks like Mary Yazzie. Probably just a bird.
Hernandez. Hello, Sheriff. It's Nancy Drew again. Hello, Nancy. What can I do for you? I noticed that you put a lock on one of the buildings in the ghost town. Yeah, the support beams in there are about to go. I was afraid some dumb tourist would knock into one of them and bring the thing down, and I'd wind up having to dig them out. If I'm real careful, do you think I could have the combination? It's just an old shack. There's nothing to see in there. I'm just curious. Amateur detective, remember? I'll lock the place back up when I'm done. Well, if you swear you'll be careful. I'll be extremely careful, I promise. Let's see, where did I put that combination? Ah, here we go. Nine, two, seven, four. Thanks for your help. Just doing my job. An electrician's manual. I wonder what that's doing here. Even the crumbs are crisp. Interesting. Looks like someone's been hanging out in here. Yikes! The walls in there look like they could fall down any second. It's locked. So much for finding out what Dirk left in the cell for Francis.
An old token, or something. Hi, can I help you with something? Are there many petroglyphs around here? If you take the trail to Cougar Bend, there are hundreds. A lot of them were probably made by the Anasazi. They lived in the area until about 700 years ago, when they just suddenly picked up and left. Do you know anything about the treasure Dirk Valentine supposedly buried somewhere around Shadow Ranch? I know it's a lot of hogwash. Some people would disagree with you. If I had a dollar for every lost mine or buried treasure story I've heard in the 30-odd years I've lived here, I'd have 10 horses, 2 cars, and possibly my own helicopter. It's nothing but a tall tale. Trust me. I saw you riding earlier near Shadow Ranch. Do you ride around there a lot? You're mistaken. Shadow Ranch is private property. I never ride there. You must have seen somebody else. Whoever I saw was riding a Palomino that looked just like yours. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. So don't go telling people you saw me trespassing, because you didn't. Excuse me.